Good intel is absolutely essential to the eternal arm wrestling match between international superpowers. Governments send spies to other countries under the risk of capture and possibly some very unpleasant hospitality. However, technology is changing the game. With advancements in spy tech, countries can now use robots to gather information. The US government tried to use animals, but after hearing the following story, you'll either be amused or a bit nauseous. No, Lisa, it's not like the government is listening to everybody's conversation. The Cold War was a decades-long period of tension between the United States and the Soviet Union, as well as their respective allies, and it lasted from 1947 to 1991. It was marked by ideological conflict, communism versus democracy, nuclear arms races, espionage, and proxy wars. In the midst of all this pressure, the CIA was straining to find ways to spy on enemies of the US. They came up with a project called Operation Acoustic Kitty. The aim was to turn a living cat into a mobile surveillance device. This might sound pretty ridiculous, but the CIA must have believed it was a pretty good idea at the time. The cat that was used for the experiment um, uh, had to be cut open and have a uh, power pack placed inside its uh, abdomen. They surgically created a cyborg cat by implanting a microphone in its ear and a radio transmitter at the base of its skull. As for the antenna, it was woven into the cat's fur. The CIA operatives hoped that they could train the cat to go close to foreign officials and secretly transmit their private conversations. When the first cat was prepared, they took it to the park and tried to make a spy on two men sitting on a bench. I got a bad feeling about this. But instead of the cat going towards the bench, it instead wandered into traffic and was killed by a taxi. Not exactly the outcome the CIA agents were hoping for. Mm, I've seen this before. Death. In their report, CIA officials wrote, the problem was that cats are not especially trainable. Our final examination of trained cats convinced us that the program would not lend itself in a practical sense to our highly specialized needs. In other words, cats don't make good spies. <laughs> How absurdly simple. The US government dropped the idea of creating robo-cats and instead continued down other avenues of engineering. Don't worry, the research and development of spy bots is still going strong. Robo-cats, covert government activities, wartime stories, let us spot know what other kinds of interesting tech-related topics you'd like us to research by leaving a request in the comments. Is there a certain kind of spy tech you can't wait to learn about? What do you know about them? They're an enemy of the United States. They're mercenaries. They're dangerous. I'm one of them. You work for the very enemy you thought you were fighting. That's impossible. Operation Acoustic Kitty is just one of the many ways governments around the world have tried to improve their surveillance methods, even if it sounds pretty ridiculous. Rather than sending people with fake identities to other countries to spy, the government has figured out new ways to do so, and that's spy bots. This might be something you've seen in movies, but today, spying with robots is easy. A spy can even be in your robotic vacuum cleaner. What kind of robot can actually go undercover? Watch till the end to find out. Coming up against a full grown 800 pound tuna, with his 20 or 30 friends, you lose that battle. You lose that battle nine times out of 10. One way the government decided to spy on others is through fish, particularly the Robo Tuna. This robotic fish was designed back in 1993 by the famous MIT to mimic the swimming style of a blue fin tuna. At first, the robotic fish was meant to be the foundation of advanced propulsion systems to make underwater vehicles. To make it, the scientists first learned how fish swim, and then, using reverse engineering, they could design a robot that was more flexible and energy efficient. With governments looking for ways to spy on each other, they decided that the Robotuna could be used for another purpose, an underwater surveillance device. The US military named the project Silent Nemo, making a five-foot-long spy fish that resembled a bluefin tuna to spy on enemies entering the territory and inspect ships. Using a remote control, the government easily used this robotic fish to do whatever no human can do, at least not for long periods of time, spy underwater. Behold, Robo B. Here, take it for a test flight. Have a 
Sounds like a dream, huh? If there's one type of creature that can get close to you without you realizing, it's an insect. A butterfly could be perched on a flower, or a fly can land on your wall, and you'd never guess that it's a spy recording your every move. In an effort to create a spy device along these lines, the US Naval Research Laboratory made a micro drone called the Close In Covery Autonomous Aircraft, or a cicada. The cicada was designed to be disposable and cheap, and it could fly close without being detected. The Navy fitted the cicadas with sensors that could monitor the weather and detect dangerous substances. They could also be designed with equipment for recording conversations, making them a useful spy bot. The enemy has many spies in his service. Birds, beasts. Few people would ever guess that a bird flying overseas is actually an operative. Since the US government hasn't had great success with spy animals in the field, they decided to instead make drones that look like the real thing. Some of the best technology in the US military comes from the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA. And one of these is the Aerovironment Nano Hummingbird. She's watching us, Dad. This is a tiny remote controlled drone that was built to look like its namesake, the Hummingbird. With this flying spy bot, enemy countries would never look at hummingbirds the same way again. Another device that has altered the field of espionage is the ground robot, which is perfect for going undercover and can operate autonomously. The US and UK military are already utilizing Ghost Robotics Vision 60. At first, they were used for delivery and agriculture, but the US military found a new use for them, recon and surveillance. They can easily do a lot of the dirty work, like launching assaults and laying mines. Ground robots can potentially be used to sneak into enemy bases for remote inspection, mapping, and surveillance. Sneaky little robot dogs, aren't they? The US military also invested a lot of money developing robotic spiders. No one thinks of a spider when top secret information gets leaked. It's much less conspicuous than, say, a cyborg cat. The US Army Research Laboratory invested a whopping 38 million into the micro autonomous systems and technology, also known as the MAST project. The goal? Make spider bots for use as scouts. These spiders could be sent into enemy camps or government offices. Robo spiders could easily hide in cracks to record information. You might have heard of the T8K robot spider, but this was just a device sold to consumers. Actual spy spiders would have to be a lot less conspicuous. Another bug bot that makes a fantastic infiltrator is the robotic beetle. But the US military decided that instead of a purely mechanical bug, they wanted to make cyborg beetles instead. DARPA and researchers at the University of California implanted miniature neural and muscle stimulation systems into beetles so that the insects could be controlled remotely. The part insect, part robot hybrids were designed for surveillance and reconnaissance in dangerous and inaccessible areas. While there are no publicly available records confirming the deployment of beetle bots, it seems unlikely that a successful tested tool would go unused by the US government. Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? When you need a spy to check out narrow spaces under a collapsed building or to infiltrate secret bases on the ground, who do you send? Nowadays, you can send a robotic snake. Just look at the Guardian S snake bot that was developed by Sacros Robotics. The best part about these slither bots is their flexibility, as they can move smoothly like snakes through challenging environments, such as ground choked with debris or openings too small for humans. Even after getting wise to the idea of spy bots that look like insects, snakes, and birds, there's another option you can't see coming. 
and that's nanobots. Nanobots are microscopic in size, so you can't even see them with the naked eye. It's difficult to get information of the full scope of what nanobots are being used for, since most government research and data on the subject is classified, and DARPA isn't talking. Nanobots are pretty scary because they can be injected into humans. Once inside the body, nanobots navigate the bloodstream and tissues, sending and or receiving signals from computers. It's theorized that nanobots can be used remotely to gather data, monitor biological markers, and even track individuals. It's a good bet that the US is currently using nanobots to further their espionage activities. Fish are friends, not food. Except stinking dolphins. Charlie the Catfish was an unmanned underwater vehicle, or a UUV, developed by the CIA's Office of Advanced Technologies and Programs in the 1990s. Designed to resemble a catfish, this robotic device was intended to covertly collect water samples without detection. Charlie was controlled via a wireless line of sight radio handset and featured a pressure hole, ballast system, and communication system within its body, with a propulsion system housed in its tail. While specific details about Charlie's mission remain classified to this day, its development highlights the CIA's innovation approach to surveillance and intelligence gathering during that era. But we have to ask ourselves, why is something as silly sounding as a robo catfish still important enough to remain classified? Be you robot or human? Robot, we be. Uh, yup, just two robots out roboting it up. An honorable mention goes to the wheeled surveillance robot. These robots have been used for different purposes, but mostly security. Using thermal and night vision, the wheeled surveillance robots detect and analyze people and objects from a distance. They can also be programmed to verify perimeter integrity and identify trespassers. If you decide to use the wheeled surveillance robots for your spy work, then it's easy, because they can freely move around a restricted area and transmit images from the built-in camera to the base. For instance, the iRobot Packbot, which is used for reconnaissance. This robot has been deployed in Iraq and Afghanistan and can climb stairs and drive through mud. The only problem with this spy bot, however, it's easy to see it coming. Well, here it is, my weather balloon. And here is the GoPro camera, which will be attached to the weather balloon, which will go up in space. It's cool, right? Amazing. There was a lot of press when a high-altitude balloon from China flew across the United States. The US Air Force shot the balloon down and discovered it was meant to gather electronic intelligence from the military sites it flew over. That's just one example of balloon-based surveillance. Who knows how much information the Chinese spy balloon and others like it have transmitted to their government. China is not the only country to use spy balloons. After World War II, the US military started to explore the use of high-altitude spy balloons under Project Genetrix. They sent their balloons over the Soviet territory to get information. So long, boy. <laughs> Whether it's a robotic fish, beetle, snake, insect, or bird, spy bots can sneak into the darkest corners to gather information from behind enemy lines. After all, who would think to check whether or not an insect is an infiltrator? Humans in the intelligence industry always guard against other humans, but they would be slower to recognize tiny robotic operators. Do you think there's a chance you've already had an encounter with one? If you have, let us know. Can I do something for you, Mr. Bond? Uh, just a drink. A martini, shaken, not stirred. Let's have your thoughts shaking the comment section below. But don't get stirred unless it's for a like and a subscribe. Thank you for watching, and unless a robot fly on your wall catches you doing something illegal, we'll see you next time.